I've seen spicy connie salad everywhere and I really wanted to try it. It's so easy, it's just imitation crab, thinly sliced cucumber, mayonnaise, sriracha, a tiny bit of red wine vinegar, and it's so delicious. You cannot tell me that you've seen lamb naan bowls before. Let's make them today. Start by melting some butter, then we add in some garlic cloves and coriander. Mix till it looks spectacular. Grab a naan, slice a line in like this. Press the naan down on a bowl like this to make the shape. Then we spread that liquid gold across the bread. This is a Michelin chef technique called bowl on bowl. Slap it in the oven to bake. Now for the curry, start with some oil, fennel seeds, grounded cumin, garam masala, mix till combined. We need some onion, carrots, mix again, garlic, ginger, a load of lamb shoulder, chopped tomatoes, some lamb stock. Give it a mix and then we need to fill out the bowl. Finesse with your yogurt, coriander, and that's it. You got that banging lamb full of flavor, sensation, served with a sour cream and parsley dip. Enjoy. Hi guys, today is day four of a week of Greek recipes. It wouldn't be Greek week without tzatziki sauce. Grate your cucumber, hit it with some salt, let it sit for 10 minutes to get all the moisture out of it, squeeze it out, perfect. Now to a dish, you're gonna add your yogurt, olive oil, salt, dill, garlic, vinegar and add back in your cucumber give it a stir you guys it is that easy this is great as a condiment or dip enjoy it's kristen from america's test kitchen and today we're going to make cast iron steaks with herb butter season both sides with kosher salt and let it rest for 30 minutes place your skillet on the middle rack and heat your oven to 500 degrees combine butter shallots garlic chives and parsley and set aside pat your steak dry and season with pepper on both sides Remove your skillet from the oven, place on medium high heat and add two tablespoons of oil. Once the pan is smoking, add your steak and sear for seven minutes, flipping in two minute increments till it's browned on all sides. Transfer your steak to a carving board and dollop with two tablespoons of the herb butter. Tent your steaks for five minutes, slice a half inch thick, and there you go. Beautiful and ready to serve. One of my most viral recipes is my whipped feta and roasted tomato dip recipe and today I'm showing you how to make it. Let's go. All you have to do is add crumbled feta, water, olive oil and cream cheese to a free processor. Then you're going to add in some lemon zest and honey, salt and pepper and we're going to add it to a bowl. Then we're going to add our roasted tomatoes on top of the feta cheese dip and there you have it. Full recipe on my Instagram, website and YouTube. Check it out. Enjoy. One thing that cures loneliness is cheese so this is a single serving fancy ass mac and cheese well it's it's medium fancy it's two teaspoons of olive oil and two teaspoons of flour to make an olive oil bechamel where you gradually add one cup of milk until you get a thick and creamy sauce then add your spices and a bay leaf excuse me my dog just yawned <laughs> okay we're back make that sauce and add it to cheese kale and al dente pasta and bake at 350 for 20 to 25 minutes and that is the entire recipe homemade rice crackers in a food processor, combine two cups of brown rice, garlic powder, and salt. Hit it to puree and then add about a quarter cup of olive oil. When the rice is smooth, roll it into a ball and place it on a parchment paper lined baking tray. Using a piece of parchment paper and a cup, firmly press each one flat. In a bowl, combine garlic powder, smoked paprika, onion powder, and salt. Sprinkle it over some of the crackers. Add some rosemary to the others and then some black pepper. Bake the crackers for 40 minutes at 375 degrees Fahrenheit and then you get crunchy, delicious, super easy rice crackers, perfect to dip in guac. Honestly, I could probably eat cheesy toast with bruschetta every night of the week. Let me show you how to make it. First, the basics. We've got some onion, we've got some garlic, we've got some tomatoes, and we've got some basil. Add it to a bowl with some salt and olive oil and let it marinate for a while. A few hours is fine, but overnight is better. Slice some Italian bread and we're going to broil this twice. First with olive oil, then with mozzarella. Now top with those delish tomatoes. Like and follow for more easy recipes. Oh, you want to make some seared scallops? Let's go! Pat these dry. Cast iron. Oh, shit. Medium high heat. Make sure your skillet's nice and hot before you add your oil. Nice, even coat. Into a side bowl. Sriracha, minced garlic, and honey. Salt. Peppers. Two minutes each side. Take it off the heat. This is how I make my high protein almond butter. No blender or almonds necessary. I'm using the new Bob's Red Mill almond protein powder and mixing half a cup of that in with a quarter cup of water. And voila, you've got almond butter that's so easy. You need to try this quick and healthy savory snack. To make this, grab your favorite gluten-free cracker, then top it with some vegan cream cheese on every single slice. 
Then slice up some cucumbers into thin slices and place them on top. I then seasoned it with everything bagel seasoning and some microgreens just to add an extra crunch and make it extra healthy. Hope you enjoyed. I started trying out some easy Super Bowl Sunday appetizers to make for my husband. These loaded tater tots were seriously so good and were so easy to make. I'm making these every Sunday. Follow for more. You got to make these Fiesta potatoes in your air fryer. Line your air fryer with aluminum foil and go in with some bite-sized pieces of potato, some olive oil, a little flour, kosher salt, pepper. Mix that all up. In it goes 400 degrees, 15 minutes. After that, bring it out. Cheddar cheese, Parmesan, back in for another two to three minutes to melt. Top it with some sour cream and some hot sauce. Like, comment, and follow me for more. The best roast potatoes that are creamy on the inside and crispy on the outside do not just happen. They take a little extra work, love, and care. You're going to start off by parboiling your peeled potato chunks in some boiling baking soda water until fork tender. Next, you're going to heat some oil in a pan and add to it garlic and fresh oregano cooking for three minutes. You're going to strain that infused oil into a large bowl so you can then toss the drained potatoes all together until they're coated and smushy, seasoned like you mean it. Then you're going to spread those potatoes on a baking sheet and roast for 20 minutes at 425. You're going to remove them from the oven, turn them over, and roast for another 30 minutes. When they're nice and crispy and brown, you're ready to toss them with the reserved oregano garlic mixture. Love your life. This is how you make the best crispy smashed potatoes in the world. Mm. I need to boil the potatoes. So we're gonna let that do that. There's salt in there, we're gonna cover it. And you would add your salt, your pepper, and then I do a teaspoon of crushed red pepper, a teaspoon of garlic powder, a teaspoon of onion powder, a tablespoon of rosemary, and a teaspoon of thyme. Three tablespoons of olive oil go in there, along with your seasonings. Everything's to taste. Put that all in there, you mix it up with your gloves, you make love to it. Now, a sheet pan with some parchment paper. All right, there we go. Roll them out, and you smash them. Now we're gonna put in the oven, 425 degrees, for 30 minutes, or to your liking. Oh, you hear the crunch? Mm. Pulled pork mac and cheese with Alabama white barbecue sauce. Now you don't need a smoker to make this pulled pork. I'm gonna show you how I do it. I get a nice bed of aromatics together. I take my pork shoulder, rub it with my favorite spices. And we're gonna go 275 degrees, for about 10 hours. It is gonna come out perfect, all right? Now my wife's allergic to tomatoes, so we're gonna do a white barbecue sauce here. Mayonnaise, vinegar, mustard, horseradish, a little salt and pepper, garlic powder, paprika, and Tabasco. Mix that up and set it aside. Mac and cheese is a classic recipe. Butter and garlic, a little flour. I'm gonna make my bechamel. Add my cheese. Give that a nice stir. Get that pasta in there. A little more cheese and mix it up. Let's pull that pork. Look at that. Macaroni and cheese, the pork, the sauce. Wow, what a treat. Cheers, everyone. Let's cook crispy shrimp and crab wontons. First, start off by mincing your peeled and cleaned shrimp. And then you're gonna go ahead and chop your green onions, smash and mince that garlic, and then set it aside. To a bowl, you're gonna add your minced shrimp, some crab meat, your green onions, your garlic, one large egg white. Be careful not to pop your egg yolk. I popped it a little bit here, but it's all good. Then you're gonna add in some cornstarch, some soy sauce, a little bit of sesame oil, some white pepper, a little bit of honey for a little bit of sweetness, some salt, give it a nice mix, and then you're gonna set it aside. Now let's wrap. Add about a teaspoon of filling to the wrapper, wet the corners, fold it in half like a triangle, do a couple pleats, repeat on the other side. You're gonna get this purse here, fry until beautiful, crispy, golden brown, dip in a sauce of your choice, and enjoy. These are the best homemade shrimp tacos that you'll ever have, in my humble opinion. With a nice spicy mayo on top, they are so, so good. Let's get started. Buy your shrimp. Mine is peeled and deveined, and I defrosted it and patted it dry. Add two teaspoons of oil. I'm using avocado. Seasonings are to taste. A little pinch of salt, pepper, garlic powder, paprika, and a touch of cayenne if you want that spicy hit. Massage your shrimp together and wash your hands well. They're nice and marinated. In a hot skillet, add them spacefully apart and cook them for about a minute until they're nice and crispy don't overcook them please add your favorite tortilla of choice I'm using flour to another hot skillet and just toast it on each side 
Once it's toasted, you can mash a little bit of avocado or use a little bit of guac, top it off with some purple cabbage or any. Add your shrimp on top and a nice little drizzle of spicy mayo. You can garnish with parsley or cilantro and enjoy. Spicy mayo consists of a little bit of mayo with your favorite hot sauce or sriracha.